Ryan, mate, welcome to the show. Pleasure to be here, Matt. Thanks for having me. I actually have a little prop with me. This was a total last minute, <laughs> total last minute idea that I had, and you're going to be blown away with how well this works, okay? Okay. So you <laughs> sent me an email. I did. In 2019. I did. Okay. And this is the mad thing. It's actually four years to the day. To the day? To the actual You're day? Kidding. No, no man, seriously. Not. It's the 12th of December. That. Look at this. <laughs> oh my Isn't goodness. that spooky? And like that wasn't planned, like even even slightly. Four years to the day. Yeah. But I thought this would be a good jumping off point because this is a really good example of how someone can move to Northern Ireland, start a business and make it work. That feels like yesterday. This is a real nostalgia Isn't moment. That's this crazy? Me. Four years ago. So Ryan and I met four years ago in the studio. I'll, I'll read parts of this email. So it says, uh, Hi Matt, love the podcast, really inspiring. I live across the water in London at the moment and I share your passion for Belfast and Northern Ireland. So amazing to hear the great things that people back home are doing uh, every single Monday. I work as a lawyer over here in London at the moment and I'm considering moving back in the near future and taking a bit of a career change. Would love to catch up uh, over Christmas for a coffee. Don't worry, coffee's on me. <laughs> <laughs> so we we met and I remember I didn't think it was four years ago now I have to say yeah but we met and since then you have started this incredible business that has gone from strength to strength so it's amazing what you can do whenever you you, you take that courageous step my goodness yeah I, I get in a way it feels like yesterday but I suppose a lot of like time has passed since then but yeah I was in London I, I remember the feeling I had in my life at that time like I I kind of, I, I wanted out of the previous career I was doing and I had like some seeds of an idea for a business, but not really anything at all. Um, but I was quite determined to do it. And this, these were like the first tentative steps I was taking around like setting something up, chatting to like yourself. And that Christmas, there was a couple other ones I was chatting to as well. And I just went and met people and heard the stories. Like I, I was really inspired to be honest sitting in London and it, like I know London isn't very far away but I wasn't coming home very much at the time and it felt very far away. Um, and I loved every Monday just like tuning into your podcast while I was sitting at my desk and working. It couldn't have felt further away but also got <laughs> closer in, in a way and it was, real, it was just so cool to be honest like sitting there and hearing all these inspiring stories of people who yeah. are from here that have gone out around the world done amazing things um, and I just love I just love listening to it and then that's why I reached out to you and mm. it was yeah and I came in first time of the bath. <laughs> it's crazy and now I mean the bath's your business home. Before we go any further, this episode is part of our ongoing series with NI Connections, where we interview an interesting person from Northern Ireland who's living and slash or working overseas. Now, who are NI Connections? They are the diaspora department of Invest in I, and their mission is really, really simple. It's to connect the Northern Irish community all around the world. They put together some really incredible resources, including how to move you and your family back home if you have been living overseas, how to move to Northern Ireland for the first time, and even how to move your business or open up a new branch in this wonderful place that we call home. You will also can find hundreds of interviews and profiles with fascinating people who are proud to call this place home. And you can check out all of these things and sign up for their free email newsletter at niconnections.com. Thanks very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of today's episode. Give us like some sort of a metric that helps people understand. So is it like how much money have you guys raised as a startup, or give us some sort of a, 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 a number point? To understand where we're at. Oh, yeah. it, I, I feel like that, that focusing on that is probably not as important. Really, the stuff that I get really excited about what we've achieved is like we have taken this idea from like a – me lying on my floor in my bedroom, like <laughs> trying to find any way out of my previous career to like, like kind of like a desperation really to from that point to like a seed of an area that was interesting to, okay, something that looks like a product to, okay, mm -hmm. other people agree with us. They don't think this is completely stupid to suddenly like people being like, okay, actually I want to use this and I'm going to pay you for it. Yeah. Um, and that, and, and getting to a stage now where we have a team of people and still not like a massive team or anything, but like, to have reached that stage and like from that e from the point of that email, which is such a cool start. Like, um, yeah, sometimes you have to, like, I'm not very good at doing this, but looking back and this is the first time I've probably really done it, but sure. looking back and being like, right, okay, yeah, we've come a long way and um, there's obviously a, still a massive way to go, but it's pretty cool Yeah, uh, sometimes to take, take pause and reflect. Sure, and it's funny because I remember, you know, the first few times you pitched the idea and I, I was listening and I was kind of like giving early feedback. I remember being like, AI, yeah, I get it, but I'm not really sure it's going to take off. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> and now, like, I look at Jane, I'm like, man, this guy was actually so ahead of the curve. Not everyone's AI on the brain. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's one of these things. And it will be one of those things, I think, where it'll probably go through a bit of a winter as well, where, like, the technology doesn't achieve people's wildest dreams sure. in a way. And then people will pull back and say, hey, it's not as powerful as we suspected. And it's not cool anymore. There's this other cool crypto version 7 is out now. And isn't it so cool? Well, let's all focus on it. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to try and avoid chasing after that shiny thing I think um, in the startup world if you're always chasing after the shiny thing there's always another shiny thing to chase Mm -hmm. it's a little bit um, uh, it's a bit of a like false promise to follow all that stuff so you have to try and just like bed in like the fundamentals of this and what what are the key fundamentals and I suppose from my perspective when I think of AI I I honestly do think it's on the scale of like the invention of the microprocessor or the invention of the web or the shift to mobile. Like these are transformative like points in human history that really yeah. change how we live our lives. And I do think this technology has the potential to be that. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to see that future. Like I was really passionate. I was like, this is incredible what this thing can do. Yeah. Um, but to get there, I feel like people needed to trust it. And like you need to be able to trust these things. And how do people start trusting things? Well, you put like guardrails up around how they're used and you put rules around things and you put high standards in place to mm-hmm. make sure that the systems are doing everything that they need to be doing and that whole space of doing that kind of thing like the risk management stuff I know it sounds potentially a little bit boring but actually it's probably the most exciting one because it's a real enabler for the technology to have that impact on the world big time big all time all of us want to see so in Zen, Enzai in a couple of sentences, stay high level because we will get into it, but there's other places I want to touch on first. I'll stay high level, don't worry. Um, Enzai, so we're, we're a B2B software company. Um, our technology helps organizations understand and manage the risks that come with AI mm-hmm. while also meeting all of their emerging regulatory obligations. On rail, that's polished. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can do that one on autopilot. I bet, point. yeah. <laughs> I can be like 10, 10 miles down the road. What I love about it is it's the seed, it's the seed of your legal career you know combined with something new and I love it it doesn't always happen it doesn't have to be this way but I love whenever people get into a business where they have a little bit of an origin story you know it's like they 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 know something about that world loosely and it helps them to kind of move forward in it before we kind of get into the story I want to go back to what you said about we never take the time to stop and reflect how far we've actually come you ever heard of the gap and the gain Never heard of the gap. In so the I just, just finished this book and I want to bring it up because I want everyone to, to read it. So it's by a guy called Dan Sullivan and he talks about, he works with high achievers. So he's like a, a entrepreneur coach type person. And he says with high achievers, they're very, very rarely happy because they're always, always, always chasing after an ideal. And he says that an ideal is kind of like the horizon. It's like you can never actually reach it. If you take one step towards the ideal, it gets further away. And so he calls that the gap, the gap between where you currently are and your your ideal or your dream outcome. Yeah. And he says, a far better way to live your life with more momentum and more energy and more positivity is if you look at your starting point, you look at where you came from. And he calls whenever you're doing that, you're, in, you're living in the gain versus living in the gap. Yeah. And so I love the fact that if you cast your mind back to four years ago, like, look where you started. You're lying on the floor. You have that desperate desperate feeling that you're talking about and you're just looking out. Yeah. It's yeah. unreal. I, I do like that. Um, I'll probably frame it in a slightly different way. Like, uh, for me, it's not so much like getting loads of value from that gain and looking back or whatever, but the way I try and do it is just like genuinely try and enjoy every day of this. Every, every day that we get to do this is like a privilege, to be honest. This is not work. Like, I'm sitting here <laughs> in a podcast. <laughs> this is not work. Come on. <laughs> Um, I'm doing some, like a webinar later on and it's not work either that is like genuinely like really really fun thing to do and solving these kind of problems is fun so I look at it as like just enjoy like I, I do agree with you that there's like always a new destination and it just keeps getting further away and further <laughs> away I think that's always going to be the way but if you just try and enjoy that journey and every step yeah, of that journey I think you wouldn't go too far wrong so that's kind of how I try and free with yeah no I love it I really love it so talk to us about that that lying on the floor, desperate feeling. Because I think a lot of people get there and very few people take the next step. And that one extra step that you took is the difference between you still, four years later, lying on the floor in a job you hate in a city you don't want to be in anymore versus where you are now. Like, that's what I want to talk about. It's that little tiny step that changes everything. Yeah, I and I, I actually love talking about this because I think it looks 
so um, difficult from the outside. I remember like looking at like startups and stuff and reading about them in TechCrunch that raised a bunch of money. And I was like, oh, that's so far away. Like, how do you ever get to that? That's like unachievable, really. Um, but what I probably didn't realize at the time and what I think most people didn't realize is that it just, it, it starts with the most seemingly innocuous little steps. Like that email that you showed at the start, that is one of those steps. Like honestly, yeah, that yeah. is one of those 100% steps. It is. That yeah. was one of the earliest, earliest, early steps I took. Um, and then there was a couple of other, like just really small, early, seemingly irrelevant type steps um, that you take. Like for me, one of the first big things was just registering a domain name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like that felt like something tangible I could do as a start. Yeah. So it was literally one of the first things I did was register a domain name. I didn't even know what it was for, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> but I registered the, the domain name and that gets it all going. So I think like the start of a company is just begins with these steps. It just seems so like almost like playing pretend as well at mm-hmm. times, like so small and so irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. But over time, you take you take a bunch of those; they all add up. Yeah, and then keep taking a bunch of them, and keep taking a bunch of them, and 100%. Then four years have gone by. Yeah, we talk a lot internally as a team about domino decisions. So, like, you, to arrive at a massive destination, it's impossible if you think about it that way. But like, it just starts with like you just need to flick over one domino. Yeah, that's all it is. It you really know, is. so the do- registering your domain was like flicking a domino over, yeah. or like having all those coffees four years ago was a domino, and dominoes are great because. Then the next domino just presents itself. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's it's crazy, and you know, it's working with working with Daniel, who just came out of school, and a bunch of my mates, and just a wider community. It's interesting, like when you give people permission, it's like, yeah, you can send an email to someone and ask them for a coffee. They're like, really? Yeah, you know, or it's like, yeah, you can go ahead and just like register a domain name. You can set up a company. Like these are all things that you could do immediately after listening to this podcast. Actually, you could do all of them by the time the podcast is finished. 100, 100%. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that mad? That is, that is literally what it takes to get going and get started. Like, it's, uh, it's, very, it's a very exciting time as well. Like, when you're at the earliest stages, you'll never know less about mm. the problem area that you're solving for. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're in the dark the most almost. And you, yeah, there's a, like a long way to go, but they're just small little steps. The tiny little steps yeah. get you more knowledge and every day you'll know a little bit more, you'll know a little bit more. And Absolutely. all adds up. So t- talk to us about some of those bigger dominoes that early on in the journey that you kind of knocked over. So for example, for me, a huge domino in, in my entrepreneurial journey was ended up in normal baths. I got put on this restructuring deal. So we were doing this like massive financial restructuring and... I remember that Christmas, I worked basically the whole way through Christmas. Um, like I was supposed to be off and I was doing mental, mental hours. And then uh, I was on the lookout for areas and like things that could be interesting. And I found, I found this space and I found like some proposals around doing stuff in this, like regulations mm-hmm. in the AI space. And that was what really like lit the fire. And then after that, I... I the first steps, I suppose, at, well, once I took, I, I knew that was an area. I knew that was a thing. The first thing I did was apply to um, this, like, kind of like, I won't name names, but it was kind of like an accelerator type thing here in Belfast. It wasn't on my bath or anything, but it was an accelerator type thing um, that I think looked really cool and really interesting and applied for that. And it was like one of the first key steps of getting going. So that's when it started to, I started taking those silly small steps that felt yeah. like something. And then they started materializing into stuff that maybe, became a bit of a thing early obstacles were you smacked in the face early on by anything 100 percent, 100 like relentlessly smacked in the face. <laughs> relentlessly it's all we did all that happened to me just constant smacks in the face from everyone like lots of people tell me like the, oh, the classic stories you're going to chat to people and they don't sound excited about it like mm. say it's not a good idea all this kind of it's not it's not it's not anything like catch yourself on <laughs> kind of vibes um but the biggest smack we took at the face probably came from that accelerator a little bit thing that we got signed up to. Now, I think it's a good thing and I think it's very helpful for people. Um, but we signed up to that and then started doing it. It was like a Monday night. Every Monday night you had to commit and some really helpful advice to people just getting going, getting going. But there was like a like one Monday night we couldn't attend um, because I was, on a, I was on this restructuring. I was working like 100-hour weeks, like literally around the clock. I had done like all-nighters back-to-back mm. um, and just couldn't attend the Monday night and I messaged ahead saying, hey, I can't come to this Monday night. Um, 
really sorry. Can we can we do it later in the week or something? Um, and I like the next day, I just got this message being like, "You've been kicked off the course. Ooh. Yeah, you could. You have to commit to these things, and you're obviously not committed." So, oh my word! So off. off what type you of go. a cult is this? Off, <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. So we got we yeah forcibly kicked off that course. Um, so yeah, relentless smacks in the face. But then mm. it was the best thing for us, really. Like I mean. Uh, it's pretty cool. Like, it lights a bit of a... I, w- there was already a fire, right? But that really stoked it. I mean, yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Stoked yeah. the fire. Um, you start your villain arc. Yeah. <laughs> the, the revenge narrative <laughs> kicks in. You're like, yes. <laughs> stoked that fire. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, it was like, we'll show them. Um, and, <laughs> yes, yeah, so, like, very much, like, lit, kind of lit a fire. And, that, mm. like, you just get used to, like, taking those smacks in the face, like... Just bring them on, like bring them on, like it's 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 not meant to be easy. It's like going to be really really hard. Yeah, um, it's probably been even harder than I, I knew it was going to be hard. It's probably been even harder than I thought. But sure. um, are you a Lord of the Rings fan? You know, I'm not. I don't really watch any movies. Oh man, I'm afraid. Why? That's okay. What are you thinking? No, no, I'll not share it. I'll not share it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. I'll not say anything. Okay, no, well, um, there's this bit at the very start of Lord of the Rings where so like. The, well, two of the main characters are called Frodo and Sam. They're like these little hobbits. They oh, I know, this, I know, I know. Who in are, this yeah. little village. And there's this lovely moment where like they're in a cornfield and Sam like just stops and like Frodo turns around to him and goes, Sam, what is it? And and Sam goes, if I take one step further, it's the furthest I've ever been away from home. Oh, I remember this, yeah. Yeah, and it's this lovely m- moment. The music's amazing. And then literally 30 seconds later, they're like, about to get killed by this massive like <laughs> shadow ring wraith or something and I love that because that's just like that's what happens if you go on journeys it's like you're so excited you've got the buzz of starting but then like really early on you're hit with an early obstacle and I'm not sure if we talk about the early obstacles enough because it's very easy to kind of feel like oh I don't know is this is this the right thing for me I got kicked off this accelerator program maybe I'm not supposed to pursue this business and you know if you're not aware that those early obstacles are actually part of the deal yeah. then it can be very easy to kind of get off the train before it even really properly starts taking off yeah I think one of the like guiding principles for me and my co-founder whenever we were right at the beginning of this is like, we kept telling ourselves like if it's hard it's really hard probably means you're in the right place mm. if it's really hard <laughs> you're like oh my goodness this is <laughs> I'm expecting this yeah. then kind of cut you're along the right lines yeah you're looking in the right area, so that was kind of like a guiding guiding principle. It's like these these things are. It's not going to be easy. You just got to, as you say, keep going through these obstacles. Absolutely. So if you if you skip forward along the journey a little bit, you start to kind of meet all these different allies and mentors and people around you. Your team starts to grow. Who are some of? And you can name check them or you can keep them anonymous. I don't really care. Who were some of the most important people that you met early on? That helped you get to where you are now. Yeah, so I'd, I'd, I'd say one of them actually. I started telling the story, but didn't finish it. But um, one of them was my mentor. Uh, whenever I started my my legal career, so you start out and you do like a training contract, mm-hmm. um, and it, the first day you rock up and you're given like a supervisor, and the supervisor tends to be someone who's maybe like been at this for like ten years and kind of really knows their stuff, and they impart their wisdom onto you. Um, so I rocked up at this law firm and just like of all the law firms I could have gone to, of all the departments within that law firm I could have got sent to, um, and of all the people in that department <laughs> that could have been my supervisor. I like how you're stacking the, the, the probability yeah, here is good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I got I, I got paired with this guy called Stephen Scanlon, um, and he is like, the, to be honest, the big brother I never had really because mm. I'm, I'm the eldest of four boys. And um, he was definitely like a brother from another mother. And from day one, like we just got on like a house on fire and... He, he, yeah, he was. We were in the funds team. I was there, supposed to be there for six months. Um, re- just got on really well. He was like incredibly knowledgeable, really, really smart. Like I was a little bit in awe of him, to be honest, whenever I met him, just how good at operating he was and how good he was at pulling all these strings. I got to sit in a room with him, just me and him, and I just got to watch him all day do his thing. And he would be like looking over me and like making sure I was doing the right stuff and all that. Um, and yeah, very quickly, like it, it, 
it was it became like a friendship to be honest within the first couple of weeks I was like okay like this is someone like I'm mates with really um but I was still still afraid of him because he was super <laughs> smart he was super he was smart so powerful like, <laughs> I was still a wee, I was still a wee junior and he was like still like yeah oh, you were so, Frodo he was Aragon if you keep the 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 narrative going yeah um and uh like three months into me being there he turned around and was like um Ryan can you close the door like it was just the two of us in the office and I immediately, like, my mind jumped to conclusions. I was like, I have really messed something up here. That piece of work I did two days ago was a disaster. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get destroyed here. And got up shaking and like closed the door and sat back down. And he was like, Ryan, I've got something to tell you. I'm leaving the firm. <laughs> and I was like, one, thank God, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> um, but two, like, why, like, why, why would you leave? Like, like he was like, yeah, you're the goat, bro. Yeah, he was a goat. He was like a year out from making partner. Um, they all, the partners loved him. The clients loved him even more. Like, it was just a dead cert. Um, so it just seemed weird that he would jump off the treadmill at that stage. And what, what are you doing? He was like, look, listen, like last night I sold my start up for like a very substantial sum of money at like four in the morning. Um, I'm leaving. I'm going to go and do something better with my life than this. <laughs> and I just, like my jaw was on the floor. You had to like, I had to like pick it up and carry it around for the rest of the day. I couldn't believe it. Like, couldn't believe that this was a thing. He, there, this guy was, he built like a software company on the side while he was working as a corporate lawyer. What the heck? In a US law firm, like one of the most demanding environments imaginable. Uh, and I just thought this was just the most insanely cool thing that anyone could ever do. And off he went, he left. And like, I, I, I was I, it just like, it was a pivotal moment probably in my life and career where I was like, that is what I want to do. Like, that is cool, eh, what this guy has done. Wow. I want to do that. Um, Insane. From, yeah, from that moment on, I probably was always thinking, right, how do I, how do, I do that? And yeah. As I say, he, he was a mate of mine, so we, we kept in touch for years and to this day, um, kept in touch. And we would always go for coffees and stuff throughout that period. We, we would chat and he'd be talking about what his next idea was and what he was going to go for. And he'd be sense checking ideas off me. I'd be sense checking ideas off him. Um, and eventually, like, just to piece the whole timeline together, I'd emailed you in 2019, mm -hmm. 2020. I caught up with him again just before the pandemic, and he was like, "I'm I'm going again here. I, I want I'm st this is this is going to be big. Um, do you want to like write like an angel check, like an investment check?" And I was like, "I don't have very much money, but I will. Um, <laughs> but like on one condition, like can I can I see how this is done? Can I mm. see how you do what you do? Because um, I obviously want to do it as well." And he was like, "Yeah, no bother." And during that year, I kind of like got a bunch of exposure to like what goes into those earliest stages of like building a company and how does it do it. And that demystified so much of it for me. In yeah, terms yeah, of the, yeah. In the, all those initial steps I talked about yeah. that seemed like nothing. I saw him take all of those steps and I've seen that company go from what it was then, which was literally just like a three-man WhatsApp group. Yeah. Which I was one of those men. Um, and then now it's like, I don't know how many people employ, like 150 people. Unbelievable. Um, one of the fastest growing legal tech startups in the world. So it was cool to see that. Amazing. Well, I have a, a Sarah Fryerism on the wall there. We interviewed her a few years ago and she says, you can't be what you can't see. Oh, yeah. And it's kind of become like a little bit of a guiding principle of the podcast. Like one of the reasons we love doing this podcast is we really want people from Northern Ireland just to be exposed to people doing stuff. Yeah. So that it plants the seed. It, yeah. Just like with this guy, this mentor brother of yours, yeah. where it's kind of like, oh, Oh, well, if he can do that, well, like, then I could probably do that as well. It planted the seed, but then this podcast helped plant the seed for me as well. And um, other seeing other people do it here, like, I suppose I, just as I started looking at this whole thing, like, I was reading about um, Overwatch and their, like, I, I always cite that what the, those guys did um, as an inspiration. I, I think it's incredible what they achieved, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and... Like you, you meet them, and Chris is very good with his time. Where you would like meet with loads of people and chat with people, and you you meet them and like extraordinary people in terms of what they've done and what they've achieved, and they're super bright guys, but they're also very relatable. Like I mean, oh, they're them. like they're ordinary so, dudes, super down to yeah, earth, I mean, like, yeah. super down to earth, lovely guys. You're like, oh, like that's inspiring. Like I mean, it shows you like it's doable. Like, yeah, it's doable. So um, yeah, a bunch of those things just plant a bunch of seeds, and mm -hmm. then. Um, then then one thing leads to another and 
I really hope that like I can kind of we've still got an awfully long way to go, but we have come a little bit down the line now with this with this company. And if I can inspire other people to do the same and start more startups here in Belfast, because mm-hmm. I think like it's something I'm very passionate about. I think we've got a bunch of really, really talented people here um, that punch way above their weight around the world. I would love to see more people, to be yeah. honest, taking the risk around here and stepping out and starting something. And you know what it might feel like, and my company might feel, and most companies, <laughs> most startups do feel, unfortunately, um, but I don't think you'll ever regret trying. Like that yeah. was, for me, I probably would have regretted not trying more than I ever regret trying. And mm-hmm. you know, if this doesn't work, I touch wood. Hopefully it does. But if down the line this never works out, um, I'll never look back and say, oh, I wish I hadn't sunk a bunch of time and years into that. I'll look back and say that was unreal. 100%. I'm glad I tried. What was it like moving back home? Did you leave home with any sort of like, ah, I can't wait to get out of this place or did you just leave for opportunity? And then what was it like? actually flying back to the, the nest? Yeah, um, I, I left. It, I originally left when I was probably about 19 and went to university over across the water. And that was just cool. Like, it was just a, I wanted a different experience, yeah. um, which is really understandable. And loads, I think loads of kids feel that way whenever they're sort of 18, 19. Um, and it makes a bunch of sense. Go get some different experience, see what it's like. And then I graduated from uni and came home for a year and really enjoyed being at home, but had that itch again. I was like, I haven't, I haven't scratched the itch fully. I need to go away again. So I was quite keen to go away. Yeah. And I moved to London. And I'd say like, I lived in London for maybe like six or seven years, like a good long time. And the first year there, I loved it. It was an extension of university the first year there, really. Like, um, <laughs> may as well have been, been at uni. It was the same sort of, it was the same sort of carry on. Um, but... I loved it for that. Like, it was yeah. really, really good. Um, and I was living with a bunch of friends from uni and just had a crack. And then uh, the second year, I suppose, it was. I still liked it. Um, but I suppose this crack started the show. And by the third and the fourth year, I was, like, pretty sick of London, actually. Um, hmm. I could see all of the... I could, there's a bunch of stuff that makes London great, but then there's also a bunch of downsides. And the appeal of home just grew stronger and stronger. Like, I, I, I got quite into cycling and... If you want to go cycling in London, it takes forever to get to Richmond Park. You're stopping at every single red light and only to get to Richmond Park to go in circles all day long. Yeah. Whereas like here, 10 minutes and you're like in these rolling hills and like County Down and there's just endless roads to explore and things like that. So there was a lot of appeal towards the end for moving home. Mm. Awesome. And what's it been like? Like what have you enjoyed most about being home? Um... Good question. Like, honestly, I think it's good crack. Like, I genuinely do think the people here are very good crack. Um, that is probably, like, my main thing. Like, I, the people, to be honest, living here yeah. is what makes it so good. Like, And do, do you think, because you you've have you had that London exposure, you've had, you know, the, the US law firm experience, would you say, like, how do you feel like Belfast, Northern Ireland is positioned to start a business or take a risk? Because I know for me, when I lived in New York, and I grew sick of New York towards the end as well, couldn't wait to leave. Yeah. Uh, one of the things, and everyone always says, it's just practically like the cost of living here is much lower. So it gives you more of a financial runway. Get You know, it, it helps you keep the risk a little bit lower than if I was starting. Like I, this podcast business, there's no way it would have it would have worked in New York. Like I would have been done month two. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. My, my rent alone would have killed me. Yeah, I, I spend a lot of time in New York at the moment as well, and I agree with you. I couldn't live there either. Um, I think the co- the cost, it's definitely cheaper than New York here. New York is like the most <laughs> insanely expensive place like I've ever seen. Um, like, is day-to-day living all that much cheaper than London? Yes, in some ways. But like the price of a coffee is not actually that much cheaper. And mm. the price of a pint is definitely not that much cheaper in Cathedral Quarter. The big like thing that is cheaper is probably the housing. Like mm. the rent is cheaper, buying a house is much more doable here than it is in London. Um, so there's definitely that. But it goes, like, for me, like, the motivation of being here are much wider than that. Like, I mm. I think it's, I genuinely think it's just a really, really nice place to live. Yes, it rains too much. Yes, that's <laughs> annoying. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Was this summer the worst I've ever seen? 100%. <laughs> like, it, it was awful. <laughs> but even with that, it's still, like, an extraordinarily great place to live. And yeah. I don't know if you saw it. Like, they had that American delegation over here. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, for the listeners, like it was basically jo- Joe Kennedy, who who was on this podcast as well, organized this incredible delegation of like really heavy hitters from the states to come over here and um, travel around and see what the business culture was like here and this kind of thing. 
And there was a couple of them I got to know quite well, and they were good crack. Um, and there was one guy in particular, he just kept asking me, he was like, why are you here? <laughs> And I was like, what do you, what do you mean? What do You're you like, mean? why are you not here, man? <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean? He was like, why are you building a business here? Like a little bit in disbelief. He was like, I can tell you have like good ambitions for it. Like, why are you here? And I was like, look, this is an incredible place to build a business. It mm-hmm. genuinely is. Um, there are some of the most talented people in the world here. It is like a really, really nice place to live. Um, and every, like the rest of the world is more accessible than it's ever been thanks to like, some of the stuff that happened in the COVID lockdowns in terms of sure. getting people online. So it's never been a greater time to build a business, to be honest, in a place like here. Yeah. And I want to see more people do it. <laughs> unbelievable. Mate, clip that. That's a short right there. <laughs> that is unbelievable. So the early challenges, right? So you, uh, you get smacked in the face over the place. Was there ever like a massive right hook? So you, we talk about jab, 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 right hook. Like, was there like a massive obstacle that you faced so far? In the business journey, oh, there's been loads, and let, let me let me just clarify: like we're not out of the woods in that respect in any way. Like we're still getting all of these jobs, and they we, we will continue to for the foreseeable until we for as long as we run this company. So it's it's all part of it. Um, there's obviously, thankfully, never been like a terminal right job yet, mm-hmm. um, and hopefully there never will be. But there's been lots of things that really dent your confidence. Um, it's all part of the journey and it's all part of the learning and actually you just got to make sure like don't hold grudges because things you come, smiled there what was what's one of the things 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 come back things come back around um it, like our pre-seed round right whenever we were going to do that was like in fact raising money is always insanely hard it's always going to be one of the most challenging things you do as a business it is so difficult and rightly so but our pre-seed round we were talking about we like we hadn't got the idea formed properly. We hadn't really got the area. We weren't good. I th- I say we, me, this was all me. Like I was doing all these mistakes. Like I was, no, we weren't good at like articulating the business. We weren't good at like explaining what we do or any of these kind of things. And we found it quite difficult to be honest, to go out and raise that first round of venture capital. Um, thankfully, Techstart had the faith and believed in us and wrote us a check, which we'll forever be grateful for. Um, but it was really, really hard. And, you know, there was a bunch of folks that we got rejected from in that first round. And, like, the nature of this game is, like, sometimes you do these calls and they don't go to plan and, like, you never hear from people again and this kind of thing. And it was a really cool full circle moment, to be honest, whenever, you know, we'd had, we'd suffered all that rejection, all that rejection in the pre-seed round. That When it came to the seed round, a lot of the people that rejected us were coming around and, like... It was just a completely different gravy. Like, they couldn't wait to speak to us, um, dying to get in on the, the round and all this kind of thing. Oh, and it was just like, that was cool. That Like, that was cool. Yeah, good feeling. You have to level up a lot as a founder. A lot. Like, I would say, like, professionally, yes, but even personally. Yeah. There's something about building something bigger than yourself that requires you to live your life to a higher standard in lots of different ways. What would you say are some of the biggest level ups that you've had to make over the last few years? I I couldn't agree more. I think you've got to do an awful lot of that. Um, one of the things I think the most valuable skill you could ever have as a founder is um, being good at learning. Mm. Le- learning is a learned skill. Yes, I know that sounds crazy, <laughs> but like learning things is something that you can teach yourself how to do. By, and, and practice it you practice you practice it by getting chucked in the deep end a bunch of times and random stuff that you don't know anything about and you practice figuring out your way and I suppose law was actually a really good career for that because there were so many times where you'd be chucked in like we, we worked across a range of different industries so there'd be times where I was chucked into learning about um, like oil rigs or learning about like the boats that service them or learning <laughs> about like yeah like freight like um, nuclear power plants to uh, undersea internet cables learning about all of these different things and getting chucked in those deep ends just having to figure it out the ability to get chucked in there and figure it out and practicing that I think is like the best preparation you could ever have for this because it's just going to keep coming you're going to be chucked in the deep end of loads of different things like I didn't know anything about the venture capital game before I started this mm-hmm. had to figure all that out I probably didn't know that much about AI if I'm truly honest Um I had to figure all of that out and there's a whole, that's a very technical area and there's a yeah. bunch of technical stuff that goes with it and there's a bunch of like unique business considerations around that whole area as well that you have to get your head around. Um, so learning all these different stuff and then building out a team and then 
learning how to like actually manage a team. Um, it's another bunch of skills that you have to learn and uh, learn learning how to do sales. Like how do you how do you sell something? How do you sell like software product? Like um, you can have these <laughs> ideas around it and stuff, but actually there's a bunch of stuff that like practices that can you can adopt that like make it a lot easier and sure. better and those kind of things and learning what those are is hard. Uh, there's just a, like a phenomenal amount of learning goes in. So I would say that is probably the like, I think I was I was pretty good at learning before uh-huh. this. Um, and I think I've got really, really good at it now. Yeah. Uh, in terms of what I've learned the most about myself is probably like as a founder, you have to be like pretty public facing. Mm-hmm. And I do a lot of that public facing stuff. So I'll be on like, we're doing a webinar this afternoon and I'll speak on that and I do a lot of like getting up on panels and stuff. And I honestly, I don't mind doing those things. I don't mind doing them. But actually what I've probably realized that like me as a founder is like, while I kind of enjoy that, I would, what I enjoy much more is like empowering other people to do that. Mm. Um, some of the best moments of this company have came for me where like we've had people in the company like get ridiculously excited about something they've worked on and really proud of what they worked on and seeing that like emotion in their face about like them being so proud about it. Like that feels like a million times better than me doing it myself. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, that's probably the like biggest learning from it. So, I mean, you, you've kind of already touched it, but what would you say your, like, what would you say your thing is? Like the thing that you uniquely are really good at that if if you had the ability to just wave a magic wand, the business would benefit the most if you spent like 80% of your calendar doing that thing. Like, is it sales? Is it developing team? Is it blah, 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 blah? Or the other way to think about it is, if there's one thing that you could delegate right now, what would it be? Oh, delegate, that's easy. I delegate all the admin. There's so much like, there's so much like boring admin. To be honest, like, everyone thinks it's so glamorous. Like there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of boring stuff goes into it as well. Um, uh, what I think I'm really good at, I'm still, honestly, I'm still figuring it out. Um, sure. It's probably at a stage where I still do a bunch of stuff. Like, I really enjoy getting in the weeds of the product and, like, figuring out exactly, like, what would what would be the easiest way to solve this really actually quite, there's going to be a really elegant, easy solution to this. That when, once everyone sees it, it's going to just look beautiful. Mm. But getting there is really hard. Doing the Working through that process to get there um, is something I really enjoy. But would I want to be doing product all day, every day? Probably not. Um, I really enjoy parts of the sales and tr- like figuring out the right questions to ask about like who makes decisions within an organization. Like what really, what do they really care about? Like what's actually going to make them buy something like this? What, where are we actually going to provide the most value to them? Yeah. What do they care about? Yeah. Figuring all that stuff out and like trying to build a bit of a process around sales is something I re- like really, really am enjoying at the moment. Um, I love that. I really enjoy the higher side of things at the moment as well. Um, in terms of like figuring out like, and trying to spot on people whether they're going to be a cultural fit or not within our company and figuring out what to optimize for in the hiring process has been really like fun learning how to do that. Uh, and I think one of my like probably unique superpowers is like I think I'm quite good at networking. Like I'm quite good at like building pretty strong relationships with people pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and I really enjoy doing that. So I I like rocking up to the conferences and being like, oh, well, what's a crack? <laughs> I haven't seen you since the last one. How are you getting on? How's the wife and kids? <laughs> Having a bit of crack like that. I really enjoy that sort of stuff. Um, it's probably one of the things that comes the most naturally to me, but is also like um, something that maybe other people struggle with a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like potentially that's one of my superpowers. But Does the accent help? Um, or like being from here. If, oh, I might even hinder it to be honest. <laughs> oh, will you hear this? I did this call. I did this call once with these guys in Boston. Um, it was so funny, and we were on the call. And maybe like ten minutes. In, I was in my spiel, right? I was giving them the pitch, and I like ten minutes in, I noticed just across the bottom, like very, like nothing had been said, but just like just notice it coming up across the the bottom that Zoom was doing live subtitles. No way. And I think they turned on the live subtitles <laughs> because they couldn't understand the accent. <laughs> uh, so that was kind of like a humbling moment. But as soon as I noticed those, I started being like, okay. Power, so the tower, next step. towel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I started thinking about that. Unreal. What has been, just starting to land the plane, what has been kind of one-off or what has been the most successful moment of the journey so far um it's a good point there's so many like it's a beauty of it's a beauty of it like the 
the best days of start like being a founder vastly, vastly exceed the best days mm. I had as a lawyer. Um, I had some pretty cool days as a lawyer, to be fair. Um, but there's it's probably hard to pick one. That, like, um, there's been obviously great days around like the fundraise and stuff, and getting being able to raise money and being able to like kind of do these things that like you've invested so much time and effort in and to actually get them to come through is really good. There's been great days around deploying stuff to customers and seeing them use it and getting their feedback. And uh, today is going to be another great day with our first proper webinar. Mm. Um, those kind of things, hosting events. We hosted an event in Toronto there a month ago. That was really good. There's, you can't pick one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a, been a bunch of like really, really cool fun days. And hopefully there's a bunch more coming. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. All right. Final question. This is very easy because we can just go back to where we started. If you could go back in a time machine to four years ago when you were writing this email and you had a couple of minutes, you could sit beside a Ryan Donnelly. You had a few minutes of his time. What sort of things would you be saying to him? Go well, son. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't change. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change the journey for for a second. I would just be like. I, I just think. I just think four years me like I remember I felt like probably kind of trapped and it was kind of like oh I'm never how, how would I where do, how do I even get out of this like I know kind of where I want to go but like how do I even remotely try and get there um I'd probably just tell that guy stop panicking mm. stop panicking you'll be all right <laughs> that's what I would do awesome man buy him a pint buy him a pint yeah buy him a, a London or cathedral quarter priced pint yeah <laughs> very generous of you very generous of you I'll do one more Sometimes throw us in, sometimes don't. Uh, gut reaction. So whatever comes into your head, yeah. what's the kindest thing someone's done for you in the last four years? The kindest thing someone's done for me in the past four years? Oh my goodness. He should have prepped me for this one. He <laughs> warn me. Um, <laughs> kindest thing that someone has done for me. There's no like one like standout moment where mm -hmm. it was like, that was like unbelievably kind. But I just like really appreciate like even just the small stuff that like, my friends will do for me all the time. Like, mm -hmm. if I'm stuck, someone picking me up, um, giving me a lift to somewhere, or like someone buying me coffee. No, no one big thing. Sure. Well, it's the small steps, as you've said. It's the small steps. There you go. Lot. Title of the episode: The small steps. Let me think. Small steps to success with Ryan Donnelly. <laughs> there you go. Don't say to success because success <laughs> is a journey. It's a journey. The small steps to doing stuff you like. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, man, thank you so much for today. Really, really appreciate it. Pleasure. Thanks and for having me. Thank you so much for listening and watching. We'll catch you again next time. See you later. Amazing stuff. Just want to give one final thanks to NI Connections for making today's episode possible. You can sign up for their free email newsletter at niconnections.com where you'll get straight to your inbox interesting stories from people who are from this place but are living and working overseas. You'll also get some really interesting insider information about best practices of how to move back home or how to start a business here and all this other really, really interesting stuff. NIConnections.com is the place to do that. And we're so, so grateful that we're able to keep this series going thanks to NI Connections support. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you so much for checking out the podcast. Cheers.